So you have this cool looking phone and you've got the basics of call control and voicemail down from the first training video. Now you're ready to tackle call forwarding and leveraging more powerful features of your phone system like call flow and presence. Well my friends, you've come to the right place. My name's Mike with Iron Logix and this is Forwarding and End User Extension Manager. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to connect and navigate the 3CX web client. You're going to manage forwarding your extension using call flow and present status. You'll manage your voicemail, greetings, and recordings. And finally, you're going to be managing conferencing, scheduling, and your web meetings. So let's get started. The 3CX web client is a very powerful tool to help you manage your extension. The first thing we need to do is get you into it. To do that, we need that welcome email I talked about in our first training video. If you deleted it or don't have it, that's okay. Just ask your system administrator to resend it to you. It's a very quick and easy process. Here's an example of what yours should look like minus all the blacked out stuff. What we're looking for specifically is the link to get to the web client and your credentials for getting in. So let's do that live right now. So using the link, I'm gonna open up Firefox and go to my web client. I'm using Firefox here, but you can use Chrome as the other supported browser. Sorry, Safari and Edge fans. For now, Firefox and Chrome are it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in. And here's my web client. Now I'm going to expand this out so you can see it full screen. So here's the expanded view of the web client. Now along the top, you have the search field where you can type in the name of a person, contact, or extension number. So for example, I'm going to type in Shannon and you can see the system pull her up. So I can either click her name or just press enter and the system's going to dial her. Now what just happened is the web client pushed that call to my desk phone, which in this instance is my control device. Now the handset icon located next to the number pad here, when the number pad is pretty self-explanatory, you can use, either use your number pad or you can use your mouse to click any of these buttons just like you were dialing the phone. But if I click the handset button, it's going to tell me which device it's controlling. So the web client right now is controlling my Yaylink desk phone. It does have the option of controlling my 3CX soft phone, which is currently installed on my smartphone. I know what you're saying. Whoa, totally cool. I know, right? So the next object is the queue button. This is your toggle for logging into and out of queues. Well, what's a queue? A call queue is simply a group of extensions that are used to answer inbound calls like a call center or a support team. You've totally been in one before when you call a company and an automated system wants you to wait in line for the next available representative. That's a call queue. Your company may or may not have this function, and if they do, you may or may not even be a member. So I'm really not going to discuss call queues in this video other than to say this is how you log into and out of them just by clicking and clicking off the queue button. The next option is your status, or what we call presence, and I'll go into detail on this very shortly, so just bear with me. Next we have your portrait, which if you click on it, it gives you some cool shortcuts to discuss all these things that we're going to talk about. Lastly, right under the portrait button is the help button, and this takes you directly to the official 3CX web client help documentation. So if you want to read or brush up on this topic rather than watching my cool video, this is for you. So let's look at the main people screen, because you can do a lot just from this area. Looking at the extension icons, you can see who it is, and if you look in the bottom right of the portrait bubbles, there's a small colored circle. That's that extension status. Green means they're available. Yellow means they're on a call. Flashing red means their phone is actually ringing. There are other extension colors, and if you can go click down your presence, you can see all the different colors and what they mean. Other options on the user cards are call, chat, web meet, and if you right click on the extension card, you can see you have expanded options. Here I can leave Cooper a voicemail, intercom, email him, or call his mobile. Obviously, if they have not provided the information, these options wouldn't be available. So for example, the conference extension probably doesn't have voicemail set up, and it probably doesn't have a cell phone. And sure enough, the options aren't listed there. I can also select what extensions I want to see based on their groups along the middle left-hand column, which is going to be right here. Uh, in our company, we just have one group, which is the Iron <laughs> Logics group, which is going to be the default extensions, but I could have other teams, other departments listed here, and those extensions would be grouped just like that. So from the people pane, we go to contacts. You have two types of contacts, company contacts, which are global contacts that span users in an environment. 
These contacts are managed by the system administrator and those they designate to manage the company contacts database. The other types of contacts are personal contacts, which, as you may have guessed, are only available to the end user and managed exclusively by you. To call a contact, you just simply click on the call button. You can edit your contact or delete them. Uh, to add more contacts, you click the plus button, type in that person's information, maybe add a picture, just like I did for my contact here, nice hairdo, and you click save. The next area is chat, which is a record of your instant message traffic within the 3CX world. Many companies have external chat programs like Slack or Skype, and if you use those and you're okay with them, you don't have to use this one. It is here, however, for you to use if you so desire. And what you're going to see here is Brian and I just did a test, so any kind of chat that you do within 3CX is going to be recorded here until you click and delete it. Call history is up next. You can click or right click for calling and chat options on any of these entries. Now these categories are fairly self-explanatory, except for abandoned. Abandoned simply means calls that did not complete for whatever reason. Maybe you or they hung up before they connected to you or to your voicemail, but essentially they are just hangups. The voicemail tab should be populated with voicemails if, and this is a big if, you're not using the voicemail to email and delete the voicemail from the system option. So if you watch my first video on voicemail and call control, you'll know you have four options for getting a voicemail from the system. Three of them will leave a voicemail message here you can listen to just like this. The last one just emails you the message and then deletes it out of the system. If you selected that option, you will not have any voicemails in here, ever. I'm going to circle back to conferencing, web meeting, and switchboard and now talk about recordings. Like voicemails, recordings will only have something in here if you actually can and have recorded calls. You can record, listen to, and delete those files right here if you have rights to do so. One disclaimer, please make sure you follow the proper local, state, and federal laws and regulations regarding call recording. I don't want to see any of you get in any trouble. And you better not say Mike showed you how to do it because I'll totally squash you. So managing your presence is extremely important. You have five different statuses along with additional custom text for each status to define what you're doing, thinking, or even feeling. There's a major warning here, and your coworkers can see this, so keep it clean and professional. For you cynical people out there, and you know who you are, this means you. We're going to spend a good amount of time regarding presence and forwarding, so let's just dive right in. With regard to 3CX, how you set your presence dictates how your calls can flow and what no-answer greetings your callers will hear. This is a lot easier to demonstrate, so let's just do it. Earlier, I mentioned how to change your status. You simply come to your presence options, drop that down, and select any one of your options here. Now, let's see what that ties to on the back end. So to do that, we go into settings and then call forwarding. Here you can see the drill down of each status and how you can leverage those statuses to dictate how you want your calls to be answered. For this video, we're gonna go over the available and away statuses. So this is available. Here you can have your custom message, which I showed and warned you about earlier. There are some important elements to this, so I'll explain them very carefully. Your no answer timeout is the amount of time in seconds that the system will wait before taking the prescribed action. In this example, it's 20 seconds. One ring is about four seconds, so in about five rings, the callers will, in this instance, forward to my voicemail. Like that. You can also see that I can select and handle internal calls differently than external calls. So for example, here, I can actually forward internal calls to another extension or to the voicemail for that extension. But I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna leave it as my voicemail. At the bottom here, you have a couple options. Ring my mobile and accept multiple calls. If you're a call multitasker, accepting multiple calls is for you. Ring my mobile, sometimes known as find me or follow me or even twinning, will do just that. When you get a call, your extension and your cell will ring simultaneously. This sounds like a good option, but it is not one I recommend for a couple reasons. First, with regard to your mobile, my preference is going to be to use the 3CX soft phone app. This makes your cell an actual extension where calls originate from the phone system itself and not your actual mobile number. For those of you that value their privacy, this is really a better option for you. The second reason to use a soft phone app is that the app can be turned on and off at the cell level. If you're using Ring My Mobile, you have to actually come back in a tool like this and turn that feature off. Everyone needs to disconnect sometimes, so take my advice, use the soft phone app and not the Ring My Mobile feature unless you just simply want to work like that.
Busy or not registered options are there for those occasions. Busy will be affected by the multiple calls option, whereas not registered means for this video at least that your extension is not working or not connected to the system for some reason. Away status also contains the internal and external call routing or forwarding options. Do not disturb mirrors the away status. And then we have lunch and business trip. The only reason I talk about these is to go over the fact that you can actually change the name of these statuses using the custom profile name field. So for example, I'm gonna change lunch to go on vacation. And as soon as I tab away, you can see that the status changed from lunch to vacation. So again, instead of lunch, we're gonna call this vacation because I'm gonna use this in an actual example of how to route calls to your coworkers based on the status changes. So here's the scenario. You're going on vacation for a week and you know getting voicemail is really not a good idea because they're just gonna sit there. Instead, a better idea would be to forward those calls to a coworker or perhaps even a ring group. Now I know I haven't talked about ring groups before. A ring group is simply a group of extensions that will ring in a certain pattern in a certain way. So instead of sending them off to one person, you can send them off to an actual group of people. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I talk about this is I'm gonna reduce the no answer timeout. We already know you're not going to be here, so why make the caller wait 20 seconds before the system sends the call on? Do them a solid favor and make this one second, which is actual minimum. One, not 14. So after one second, it goes to, and I select the forward to extension number, and I'm going to forward these calls to Alex. And I'm going to send it to Alex's actual extension, not to Alex's voicemail. I can handle internal calls differently, so people probably know when I'm on vacation and I'm just going to send those to my voicemail, but I can certainly send that to my extension, my mobile, whatever. I know what you're thinking. This is totally cool. I know, right? Now let's take a look at how these different statuses tie back to greetings. Staying in the settings area, let's go to the greetings option. Here you can see the five status options that we talked about earlier, along with the default no answer greeting for each. This is gonna allow you some granular and deep customization. I do recognize that there are some of you that will just have one no answer greeting and never change their status from available. If that's you, and that's totally okay, then you shouldn't need to mess with this very much. However, if you're gonna manage and change up your presence, you should record and set a greeting that correlates to your status. Recording greetings is simple. You click the record greeting button, name the file, and then click OK. The phone system is going to dial your phone. Record your message, then press pound. And then you can follow along with the prompts to record your greeting. When you're done, you can select the greeting right here for the available status or whatever status you happen to be working on. You can use these options over here to upload, download, and play on your extension the different recordings so you can hear what they sound like before you actually set them. With regard to uploads, I do have a word of caution and that is they need to be in a specific WAV file format. Get with your system administrator if you want to do that, but just know that no one really wants to listen to the quiet storm playing while you're telling them you're not there. Just tell them you're not going to be there and move on, my little DJs. On a serious note, with regard to forwarding presence and phone etiquette in general, keep in mind that you want people calling you to be handled in the quickest and most efficient manner possible. That's simply providing good customer service, which keeps everyone employed and happy. Before we talk about conferencing, let's summarize. Your takeaway for forwarding should simply be this. Control how and who you forward your calls to by setting up and then changing your status. Once you master this principle, presence and forwarding become very easy to manage. Now, I told you I would circle around the conferencing, and it's time. By this stage in the game, I'm sure most of you attended some form of scheduled conferencing using a WebEx, a GoToMeeting, or something along those lines. 3CX actually has the kind of functionality built in. So with that in mind, let's schedule a conference. On our sidebar, go to Schedule Conference, click Add, and we have the Create Conference dialog. We have options to do an audio or a video call. For now, we're just gonna do options, and we have an option to do it now or schedule it. You can have a date, time, and duration. We can type in a subject, add notes to participants, and then start inviting our people. And those could be internal people, like Alex, or external people. Of course, this is completely fictional, but you get the idea. We would just add that. And then we come up here and click Save. One of the coolest features of conference scheduling is that the phone system actually calls your extension when it's time to do the conference. So even though you scheduled it and it's on your calendar, sometimes still people forget, believe it or not. 
Well, those days of embarrassed missed meetings are gone because the system actually hunts you down and calls your extension. Yay. <laughs> anyway, email invites will go out with clickable links or call-in instructions, and in no time you're going to be conferencing. Now, I do need to caution you with regard to doing large conferences, or I should say large audio conferences. The system is quite capable of handling them, but for audio conferencing, you do need to have enough incoming lines to support the number of external participants that are calling in. Please talk to your system administrator about your specific company's conferencing limitations from a licensing and call capacity standpoint. The last thing we want to do is use up all of our call paths with conferencing. Your other customers won't be able to call in and reach you with all the lines occupied. Web meetings are a little different, and you will see that when you click on the system option because it's going to start a web meeting right here and now. This is just like those other web meeting clients and does use an external service, so you don't need to worry about voice lines when using this feature. Keep in mind that it's actually quite helpful to have a mic and speakers or a headset when using this tool. If you don't, nobody's going to be able to see you, nobody's going to be able to listen to you. I will go into deeper detail using this system in another video. But for now, I'm just going to tell you it's here and it's available. You can experiment with it as you see fit. The only thing we haven't gone over is the switchboard option. In a nutshell, the switchboard deals mainly with real-time call routing and call queues and the call statistics that go with it, otherwise known as the wallboard. I'm going to cover this in another video because this is a fairly role-specific topic and kind of beyond the scope of the general extension management that I wanted to cover here. Folks, if you like this video, you're going to love what we can do to make your phone system experience a great one for you and your customers. Please subscribe. It really helps us out, and I'll be adding more videos here soon. Thanks for watching.